You hear the sirens, you know what it means. Emergency show. I did not expect to be sitting here right now at this late hour, but this is not the first time this has happened with a big name coach and the University of Arkansas. Now, unfortunately, it does not seem like if John Calipari takes the Arkansas job that he's going to end up calling the Hogs at midnight like Bobby Petrino did in 2007. That would have been truly funny. But we are, it, it does seem like we are going to get John Calipari calling the Hogs at some point in the next few days. Pete Dammel from ESPN has reported that Calipari is finalizing a five-year deal with Arkansas, that the deal could be done within the next 24 hours. Multiple Arkansas media outlets are reporting that Calipari is the target of Arkansas search, which wild twists and turns on that. Remember, Eric Musselman left for USC last week. The first name you heard was Chris Beard at Ole Miss. The second name you heard was Jerome Tang at Kansas State. And then it just started bubbling up Sunday night that John Calipari might leave Kentucky, might reset his clock, might pull a Tubby Smith going to Minnesota. It's all the same. Remember, we're two weeks removed from talking about whether Kentucky should commit $33 million to firing John Calipari. Now he leaves for $0. Arkansas, which when properly motivated, has a lot of money. Whether it's Tyson Chicken, J.B. Hunt Trucking, Walmart, Jerry Jones, lots of money in Northwest Arkansas. But the donors have to be properly motivated. This is the sort of thing that could properly motivate them. Let's bring on James Fletcher III, on three's resident bracketologist, college basketball expert. James, how shocked were you when you started hearing about this? I was pretty shocked uh, because this Arkansas coaching search seemed to be one that was something that people were laughing at, not having this kind of, oh, wow, this is going to alter college basketball type of uh, situation. So uh, whatever it was, those early days of the coaching search, they will be forgotten very quickly. And now that we get reports that John Calipari is going to be on the move within the SEC and have to go back to Rupp Arena and play against Kentucky, this is, this is just a, a new era of college basketball uh, to, to it, flip it, from one school to the other. It is wild. I listened to the Twitter spaces that, that Matt Jones from Kentucky Sports Radio did earlier on Sunday night. And it was interesting hearing some Kentucky fans talk about it because they were, you know, they sounded somewhat angry at Calipari for leaving. I got the sense two weeks ago they wanted him to leave. Like, shouldn't they be thanking him for saving them $33 million and allowing them to go find another coach? Because it seemed like Cal's welcome had worn thin there. It is embarrassing, though. You, you don't want to be uh, the one that to that's told, you didn't fire me, I left. And right. they, they wanted the firing. They wanted to be able to victory lap around and say, look, you did not live up to expectations at Kentucky. Instead, John Calipari can go to Arkansas and say, look, I left Kentucky for this opportunity, for all of the great things that are here. And if you're a Kentucky fan, that's going to hurt every time that he says it, and you know he's going to say it, because you're going to be looking at it saying, hold up now. You didn't live up to our expectations, and now you can go pitch to these recruits at Arkansas, uh, to the donors at Arkansas, to the fans at Arkansas, that you left that this situation in order to be in that situation. Uh, it's it's just got a sting uh, to be left like that, even if they wanted him to leave under different circumstances. See, I don't. I I just feel like you don't let that sting because this has happened to Kentucky before. They wanted to get rid of Tubby Smith, and he takes the Minnesota job. Like. I was actually talking to a neighbor of mine yesterday who grew up near Lexington, and he was talking about his mother-in-law happened to be on the plane when Tubby Smith got on to leave Lexington. And he was, everybody was saying, thank you, coach. Thank you for doing this. You know, thank you for everything you've done. And she's like, should I know who you are? And he was probably like, oh, thank God. Nobody, you, you don't know me. <laughs> I, I can go to Minnesota in peace now. But like, that's, that's what this is. This is, uh, to put it in football terms, 
This is Jimbo Fisher to Texas A&M from Florida State, where the Florida State fans were actually pretty mad at him. Not for leaving, but pretty mad at him for the way things were going. And he's going to a place where the money is great. The resources are there. The expectations are high. Now, I will say, the, the one difference between the A&M thing and the, you know it, it, Fisher going to A&M in football and Calipari going to Arkansas in basketball is bar, Arkansas basketball has gotten it done before. Like, that, this is not a pipe dream. We've seen it happen before. Yeah, that's the big difference between both of those, especially the Tubby Smith one that you mentioned there, is that when Tubby Smith leaves from Minnesota, there, there's this kind of thought that, yeah, thank you for getting out of the way so that we can hire the next guy and become what we believe we should be. With John Calipari, this is not Minnesota. With all due respect to that program, uh, they've had some success throughout their history. Arkansas is a, a pretty storied and historic program a program that's so big that at the start of this coaching search, the names that were floated out there were some of the top coaches in the profession and such a big school that they're in the mix for a coach like John Calipari. So this, this Arkansas job is not as much of a, a downward move as some fans would want it to be if they're going to let Calipari off the hook for making that move. And I think the other thing is that he's got to come back. You've got to see. Yes, he's got to go. Tubby Smith was out of sight, out of mind. You aren't the chances that you play Minnesota as Kentucky are maybe in, in a second round NCAA tournament matchup if he has success with with John Calipari going to Arkansas. They are going to see each other two, three, four times a year, and it <laughs> is going to be incredible. It, so yeah, a little more like Nick Saban having to go back to LSU. That yeah. that sort of thing. The it the other thing to think about. Remember, Calipari had not made the second week in the NCAA tournament at Kentucky since 2019. Arkansas made the Elite Eight in 2021 and 2022 under Musselman. So this is a different situation. I, I had an Arkansas fan arguing with me on Twitter saying, because I said, well, they're going to give him a little grace period. They won't expect national championships right away. They will eventually, though. And he said, no, we'll expect them right away. I don't think they will. I think you get like a year or two. And the thing about it with Calipari, what won't change is he's going to get elite talent. He's always gotten elite talent. He will always get elite talent. I am sure part of the deal that he is talking to them about as he negotiates this deal is whatever the system is, whether it's NIL, whether it's whatever happens next in terms of player compensation, that Arkansas will be at the top of the food chain. As far as that goes, and I know that's a source of frustration for Arkansas fans who believe that, well, why, why don't we do that in football? Why don't we have that already? Well, maybe these guys, these donors need to be motivated properly, and a splash like this is what motivates them. Yeah, there's two major factors that play into John Calipari and being able to kickstart his success and the transition that Kentucky fans wanted to see as he arrives at Arkansas. Number one is that he's going to start from scratch on this roster. He's not going to have pretty much anyone. I think they have one player who is currently on the roster and that's a guy who might enter uh, the NBA draft. So we, we, he will be building a roster from scratch without having a full recruiting cycle to bring in freshmen. So what's he going to have to do? He's going to have to hit the transfer portal. And that's exactly what Kentucky fans wanted him to do. Now, if he's able to do that and has success in year one, then why wouldn't he go back to it? Why wouldn't he continue to build that way, knowing that he was able to get it done, getting experience in building it that way? So for Calipari, I think this is a, a big opportunity for him to, as crazy as it sounds as a, a Hall of Fame level coach, to grow in this new era and, and do the things that he needs to do. Second, that's going to help him in, in a big way is that I assume uh, while Musselman will take some people from Arkansas, uh, Calipari will have the opportunity to keep on some people, especially behind the scenes within mm -hmm. that program, who were doing a lot of that legwork. Uh, when we see every single recruit who enters the transfer portal, that little uh, note that pops up, whether it's from Joe Tipton or anyone else, saying that Arkansas has contacted this player, a lot of those people are still in the building. And so if Calipari can retain some of them, learn some of how they're using the transfer portal, I think that this can be a, a huge success for him in learning how to do that with the elite programs. I think that's the big question. Though. What, I, what I think happens here, though, 
is this gives Calipari an excuse to not change a thing, to do exactly what he's been doing. Because you stay at Kentucky, it's kind of under the condition that, hey, you got to do some things a little bit di differently because you can't keep getting the same result. If you go to Arkansas, you're going to be celebrated. Like when he shows up and they call the hogs together, woo, pig. Yep. He will be the toast of Northwest Arkansas. He will be the cat's meow. Everybody will be bowing down to him. That is not a recipe for change or growth or anything else. That is, everyone loves me. I'm awesome. I'm going to keep doing exactly what I've been doing. That I think, and that's why I keep making the Jimbo Fisher comparison. Mm -hmm. We were making the Jimbo Fisher comparison when Cal Perry was at Kentucky. So that's why I keep making that. If he's smart, he will do what you said. He will use this as an opportunity to change the way he builds his roster to make it fit in this era of college basketball where you've got to be older and you've got to have experienced guys who can blend in with young talent. I mean, we're about to watch UConn play for a national title, and it's a prime example of old and young guys that you were like. Donovan Klingon is a young guy they recruited. Yep. who is coming into his own as a sophomore. But without the older guys around him, it's not, they're not there. They're not playing for a national title. Right, and, and that's exactly uh, true about Calipari and what he's going to have to prove in Arkansas because he does have something to prove here to not just Arkansas, because like you said, they're going to love him no matter what for at least a couple of years, but to college basketball. Is he still at the top of the sport? If he can do it with Arkansas, I think he just cements his place in that conversation of the greatest coaches of all time. Not that he's not in that conversation, but to do it at another program and do it in a different way, which he's going to have to do would take him into a whole nother stratosphere. So I do think we're going to find out when he gets to Arkansas, did he learn the lesson or was he being forced to start learning from the lesson? If he learned yeah. the lesson, then he will come to Arkansas and he will use, because uh, we know Kentucky had been reaching out to prospects in the transfer portal. We, 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 we have that yeah. evidence so far. So if that was through him realizing how he wanted to build his roster moving forward, then I think it can be a great opportunity. If it was an understanding that he had to do that in order to keep the fans happy, and now he can go back to what he wants to do, I agree with you. It could, it could be a recipe for, for, for more of the same issues. Well, and he has a class signed at Kentucky as well, again, of elite recruits. I would, I would assume at least a few probably want to get out of, of their letter of intent, maybe follow him to Arkansas if, that, if that's what happens. But we don't know. I mean, it, if, that, if their recruitment's open back up, they also may want to wait and see who Kentucky hires. Let's, and let's talk about that. Because when we were talking about whether Kentucky would, would choose to fire Calipari or not, we were talking about that buyout being somewhat prohibitive in not necessarily they couldn't afford it. We, we explained exactly why they could afford it if they wanted to do it. But say if you wanted to go after a Nate Oates, and I realize Nate Oates says he wants to stay at Alabama. That's the reason he did his contract the way he did. That's why it's got a $12 million buyout. But guess what? Guess what you can suddenly afford if you don't have to pay $33 million to get rid of John Calipari? Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see. Uh, they're going to go big game hunting for sure. How much, uh, how extensive that list is because you don't want uh, what we were seeing early in the Arkansas search where, where fans start to get frustrated when one or two names doesn't end up hitting that they hear right out of the gates. So how extensive they make this list will be interesting, but Oates will certainly be on all the short lists ahead of the search because they have that money to spend. You know that this is going to be a motivated fan base to rally together and find the next guy to move this program forward. And NATO has shown all the signs that he can be that, that guy. He's done it in the conference. He's done it in the way that they want to see the roster built. And so he is pretty much the perfect fit on paper. Now it comes down to, does he really want to leave Alabama? He does seem uh, very comfortable there. And then can they make the logistics work to make it worth his while? Th those things are, are to be determined. And like I said, there's no guarantee that they end up going after him once they do their homework on the, those those couple of base level things. Well, and and I would imagine that the, the first two names you heard in the Arkansas search would be names you hear in the Kentucky search. Chris Beard and Jerome Tang. 
Yeah, that'll be interesting. Uh, I, I know that there, there's there's been some talk about that Chris Beard extension at Ole Miss. It seems like they've they've added to that potentially to keep him at Ole Miss. So what does that <laughs> keep do? going up? <laughs> what price yeah. keeps going up? What does that do uh, to Kentucky's ability uh, to get in there with him? That is something that we, will be to be determined. I, I think that early on, the one name that we're going to see over and over is Scott Drew. There's been mm-hmm. connections in the past between him and Kentucky, the respect that he has for the program, the, the, the respect that that program has for him. Uh, I, I think that that's a name that just really stands out as, as the perfect kind of fit. What he's been able to do, recruiting five stars and balancing that with veteran uh, players mm-hmm. at Baylor. You bring that to Kentucky, take it to another level of talent on both of those fronts and what he could accomplish. I think that's one that, that really fits in there. And then the fun names that, that we've brought up in the in the past uh, when we were talking about potentially firing him, Billy Donovan. I mean, this is the Kentucky job. If things with the Bulls aren't looking up, what does he what does he do if you give him a phone call? And hey, it was it was internet legend Trilly Donovan that initially broke the whole Calipari to Arkansas thing. It was it was Trilly Donovan that that clued the rest of us in that this is even happening. Uh, no relation to Billy Donovan, by the way. Uh, but yes, that would be fun. That would be a fun one. I still think, though I don't know that he'd leave. I think he's pretty happy where he is. If we're talking about just personality and fit, the perfect coach for Kentucky is Bruce Pearl. Bruce Pearl was born to be the basketball coach at Kentucky. That said, I think he's very happy at Auburn. I don't know that he would leave. I agree with you there. He, he, he is very proud of what he's built at Auburn, the community that he has built around Auburn basketball. So that one would be a, a really tough sell. I'm not saying it's impossible because, again, it's the Kentucky job. We're not going to rule any of these candidates out. You can throw out any name, and, and I'd have to consider it as long as they have the pedigree uh, to earn a job like that. And that's why I think that Dan Hurley, I'll throw out another name uh, that has the personality. Oh, no. has the- you even imagine he wins the second consecutive national title? You can't do that. You just can't do that. You you can't on paper. But again, this is college basketball. You also can't jump from Kentucky to Arkansas. You can't do a lot of things that we've seen happen <laughs> over the past couple months in, in coaching searches across all sports. So I'm not going to rule anything out. You, you look at a roster that's going to lose a lot of its uh, a lot of its talent. I have no doubt that Dan Hurley would be able to restock that. But would he want to restock it at Kentucky? Who knows? Who knows what's going to happen in this coaching search as the names continue to, to flow in. Well, on and, and I see some folks in the chat talking about uh, Greg McDermott at Creighton. And uh, like Red State says, uh, Creighton coach just signed an extension. It no. doesn't matter no. because they just saved $33 million over the next six years by not firing Calipari. He did them the biggest favor, James. The yeah. biggest favor. And they're probably going to get uh, potentially, it depends on who they get and, and what the terms are but you could potentially be paying your coach less than what they were paying John Calipari. Yeah. So <laughs> you add up these numbers and, you know, 12 million, 10 million, whatever the buyout that you have to pay is the, the boosters are going to be willing to pay whatever they have oh, to pay yeah. to get any of these coaches, all of these contracts you're able to get out of them if somebody's willing to pay up. So nobody who just signed an extension is out of the running, uh, but it does make it a, a more fun storyline when you see them avoid a coaching search and get a, a, uh, an extension, get some more money, and now they're back in another one. Who gets a second extension? I, I bet this happens. I, I'd be willing to bet this happens to oh, so Dr- like, I was thinking about Jerome Tang just got one at Kansas yeah. State because of Arkansas. What if what if Nate Oates just gets another ex- just another pay raise? Uh, yeah. I mean, Greg you, Byrne in Alabama is like, look, I'm not losing you to Kentucky. Here's if, if more you're money. Greg Byrne, you can sell it as he reached the Final Four. We want to reward him. Too. So you don't even, you don't even have to go down the Kentucky path. You can ignore that. Everyone knows that's why you did it. But you could you could tell the whole world, hey, he made the Final Four, first time in program history. Of course, we're going to give him more money, and <laughs> try to keep him away. Try to build that. <laughs> I, who knows? I, I bet you somebody we start thinking about uh, whether they're going to get a, a second contract extension in, in a couple of months here. All right, James. This is the craziest part. Uh, this is the part I, I I can't stop thinking about tonight. Do you know why this ultimately happened? Do you know what the inciting event for this was? The the real inciting event was the Pac-12 blowing up. 
The Pac-12 dissolving. So George Glyavkov not being able to get a TV deal for the Pac-12 done caused this, and I will tell you why. Yep. Here we go. All right, let me crack my knuckles here. This is this is going to take a minute. So the Pac-12 doesn't get a TV deal done. Oregon and Washington go to the Big Ten. USC and UCLA were already headed there. Utah, Arizona, Arizona State, Colorado heading to the Big 12. That leaves Cal, Stanford, Oregon State, Washington State adrift. Cal and Stanford, well, they are very, very good academic institutions that other academic institutions would like to be involved with, would like to be in league with. And so there happens to be another conference that needs to have extra members in case some of the members that are suing them happen to leave. And so the ACC takes Cal and Stanford, but they didn't just take Cal and Stanford. No. They took another school that said, you know what? We are so sure we belong in the big club that we will take no money from you, ACC. Just let us come. Our donors are filthy rich. We're going to be fine. You don't need to give us any money. Just let us in. And so the ACC said, SMU, come on down. And so SMU officials, as they consider how they're going to enter the ACC, look at the basketball program, and they say, you know what? Rob Lanier's just not getting it done. They fire Rob Lanier. And they go try to find a name. And who do they find? Andy Enfield. Sure. USC coach, great free throw shooter, wife's, wife's a former model, used to coach Dunk City. He's coming there. That opens the USC job. Who wants the USC job? The must bus. Eric Musselman wants the USC job. So he's going to go there. He'll become the next USC coach to rip his shirt off after USC interim football coach Ed Orgeron did. And that opens the Arkansas job. And here we sit. So George Klyavkov is the reason that John Calipari is going to Arkansas. If that doesn't explain how weird college sports is, I don't know what does. Yeah. How many, how many branches could we go off on that, 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 that tangent, if we wanted to, to spend more time on it too. It's crazy. I mean, it's, 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 an, it's insane how much we have seen college sports as a whole transition over the last couple of years. And, and it's all come to a head with the coaching carousel of 2024 and the end of 2023, because who would have, who would have thought if I had told you uh, just six months ago, maybe 10 months ago, that Alabama football, Michigan football, Kentucky basketball, Kentucky, uh, sorry. Uh, Tennessee the, women's basketball. Texas A&M football. Yep. Yeah, Tennessee women's basketball, Arkansas basketball. <laughs> all of these jobs are going to be not only open, but then filled with, with names that then lead to other big-time jobs being open. That mm -hmm. then we fill with other big time names, and we just go and uh, it, it has never been more true that we are on the coaching carousel. These names they are spinning and spinning and spinning, and we are not done yet. It could just be so easy, Kentucky. Rick Patino is right there for you. Bring it full circle, baby. Let's go. No, I don't think they're going to do that, but I'm fascinated to see what they do. James, thank you so much. No problem.